In the second video on matrices, we're looking at operations on matrices. So what can we do with them? Now we know numbers. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can do a lot of things with numbers, raise one to a power of another. We've looked at operations on numbers. Now we're going to look at this new thing we've defined called matrices and what can we do with them. So the first thing is a little bit of a boring one, is if I've got a square matrix, I can calculate the trace of the matrix and we use the letters TR to calculate the trace. Don't confuse this with the capital T that we write in the top. We saw in the first video that that is the transpose of a matrix. So the trace of a matrix is the sum of the entries on the main diagonal. So if I've got a three by three matrix, two, one, seven, five, minus one, two, zero, eight, nine. If that's my matrix A, then the trace of the matrix is the sum of what's on the main diagonal, 2 plus minus 1 plus 9, which gives you 10. So that's the trace. Now, we're not going to use the concept of trace much at the moment, but as you go further into linear algebra, this adds some value. Now, the sum of two matrices. Now, the sum of two matrices has got quite an obvious definition. It's as we expected. Now, firstly, though, if I add two matrices together, they both have to be the same size. You cannot add matrices that are not the same size, first thing. Secondly, when I add them together, I simply add the corresponding entries. So this is quite an obvious definition, adding corresponding entries. So let's look at an example. Here I've got, in the first example, I've got two two by three matrices. To add them, we simply add the corresponding entries. So for the first one, two plus five, that gives me a seven. 3 plus minus 1, which gives me a 2. 1 plus 8 gives me 9. 5 plus 2 gives me 7. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And 2 plus 0 gives me 2. So that is the sum of the two matrices. They have to be the same size, then I can add them. If I look at the next one, I've got a 2 by 2 matrix and a 3 by 3 matrix. I cannot add them. Don't even start. Don't even try. Don't try and add the ones that are there that are sort of corresponding. We don't even go there. We just say that is not defined. So that is why I said in the previous video, the sizes of matrices are very important. Before we do anything, we need to determine what the size is we're working with. All right, next concept, a scalar multiple. Now, when we talk about a scalar, we're just talking about any real number. So if I have a scalar multiple times a matrix, for example, five times A or any real number times A, what that means is you multiply every entry with that number. As simple as that. Not just one of the entries, not just one of the rows. Every single entry gets multiplied with that number. So that's also an obvious definition, hopefully. So let's take a look. Here I've got a two, two by two matrices, A and B. We're asked to find 3A plus minus 2 times B. So let us see. 3A will be 3 times the matrix 4 minus 1, 0 to 5. Plus minus 2 times the matrix B, which is 6 minus 6, 1, 0. So that is 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus the matrix. Minus 2 times 6 is minus 12. Minus 2 times minus 6 is 12. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 times 0 is 0. Now I add them together and I get 12 minus 12, which is 0. Minus 3 plus 12, which is 9. 0 minus 2, which is minus 2. 15 plus 0, which is 15. All right, so the calculation's not complicated. The matrices can be bigger, they can get more messy, but as long as they are the same size, else you cannot carry on. You can find a scalar multiple of any matrix, but when I start adding matrices together, they have to be the same size. I just want to talk about this minus two times B. Similarly to real numbers, we don't actually define the subtraction of numbers. If I look at numbers, if I say to you, what is five minus four? What I'm actually asking is what is 5 plus minus 1 times 4? Or what is 5 plus the additive inverse of 4? Or 5 plus minus 4? So we define addition and subtraction is deduced from add additive inverses. And it's the same for matrices. If I'm adding minus 2 times a matrix, we can think of it as 3a minus 2 times b. We'll get to the same thing, but in practice, we don't actually minus matrices, we're adding minus 2 times b. So just keep that in mind. 
All right. So here's a different type of question, looking at scalar multiples and addition, just to make sure we're happy with that. I'm giving you some equation, and I'm saying, well, here's some stuff. Find x, y, z, and a. All right. So we're just going to play with the left-hand side and with the right-hand side and see what we get. On the left-hand side, I've got 2x, 2y, 2z, 2 times 5 is 10. All right. Plus 2x minus y, 3, 2z. So that's my left-hand side. Let's simplify it. We can add those matrices. I've got 2x plus 2x, which gives me 4x. 2y minus y gives me y. 2z plus 3 is just 2z plus 3. 10 plus 2z is 2z plus 10. All right. Now we're told that is equal to the right-hand side. And the right-hand side is 12, 8, 13, and a. So now we can... Look at what does equals mean. Equals mean they're the same size, and they've got the same entries in the corresponding position. So that means 4x is 12. Well, if 4x is 12, I can deduce x must be 3. y is 8. We got that. 2z plus 3 must give me this number, which is 13. That means 2z is 10, so that means z is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And the last one, 2z plus 10 is a. So 2z plus 10 is a. Well, I've got the value of z now. Z is 5. So that means a must be 2 times 5, which is 10 plus 10, which is 20. So that's just playing with the definitions of scalar multiples, addition, and equality to solve for some unknowns. But right, that gets us to a theorem about all the properties. Now, we're not going to prove it in this video. But just to remind you, to keep this in mind, when we talk about addition and scalar multiplication, there's a whole lot of properties. And I suggest you pause here and read through it. I'm not going to systematically read through all of them, but just thinking about addition being closed, associative, commutative. We've got additive identities. And then what I've spoken about, the negative, um, showing us an additive inverse. And then we've got some properties linked to scalar multiples. So I'm not going to read through all of them, but pause here, go through them systematically. They can easily be proven using some generic matrices, but we're not going to prove them in this video. So just take a look and make sure you're comfortable with those properties. All right, that gets us to matrix multiplication. Now, this definition is not yet for multiplication, but it's going to get us to multiplication. Now, multiplication is not as obvious as addition. Addition is quick and easy. We add the corresponding entries. Multiplication does not work like that. So before we get to multiplication of two matrices, we're going to just define the inner product. Now, inner product is what I get if I multiply a row matrix with a column matrix. So we just have a row matrix. We use the word multiply, but it's an inner product with a column matrix. And this, if you've worked with vectors, this might remind you of a dot product between two vectors. So just keep that in mind. There is definitely a link. So that inner product is... The first entry times the first entry, plus the second entry times the second entry, plus, and so on and so on. So, very important, they must have the same number of entries to multiply. So, that means the number of columns in my row matrix has to be the same as the number of rows in my column matrix. Those two numbers have to be the same, else I can't find the inner product. So, let's look at an example. If I've got A and B here, A's inner product, and it's like an empty whole a dot for inner product. A's inner product with B is then minus 1 times 3, which is minus 3, plus 10 times minus 1, which is minus 10, plus 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 2 times 0, which is 0. So that gives me minus 3. So that's the inner product. All right, now we're going to use the inner product to help us define what multiplication of matrices are. So just take note, the inner product gives me a single number out. Not a matrix, a single number. So now, here's the formal definition, but I find it sometimes easier to show with an example. The matrix product of A and B. Now we've got a lot of information here. Most important to notice, the number columns of A must be the same as the number of rows of B, else the product is not defined. And how do I get the Entries of that product, that is 
a combination of inner products. So every single entry in the product to, to, of two matrices is an inner product between a row and a col column. So let's take a look at it by means of example. My first one, I've got a 2x2 two two matrix and a 2x2 two two matrix. Now, I can multiply them because those numbers are the same. And my resultant matrix is going to be this size by this size. So it's going to be a 2x2. Two two. Now, 2x2 two two is quite straightforward, but when the sizes are different, we'll see more how that works. So my first entry will be row 1, column 1, meaning I take the inner product of row 1 with column 1. So it's 2 times 1 plus 3 times 3. So it's 2 plus 9, which gives me 11. Next, inner product, I've got now position row 1, column 2. So it's the inner product of row 1 with column 2. So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. 3 times 0 is 0. So minus 4 plus 0 is minus 4. Okay, I'm done with row 1. You've got to be very systematic when multiplying matrices. Now I'm moving on to row 2. So row 2 is inner product with column 1. Minus 1 plus 12 is 11. It's only a coincidence that those two numbers are the same. Then row 1, this position is row 2, column 2. So I'm taking the inner product of row 2 with column 2. Minus 1 times minus 2 is 2, plus 4 times 0 is 0. So that's 2. So that's the 2 by 2 matrix, which is the result of the product of those two matrices. Let's do one more. Yeah, I've got a 2 by 2 matrix that I'm multiplying with a 2 by 3 matrix. It's legal. They're not the same size, but they don't have to be. The number of columns in my first matrix must be the same as the number of rows in my second matrix. And my resultant matrix will be 2 by 3. So 2 rows and 3 columns. And I get it from these numbers, the number of rows in the first one by the number of columns in the second one. So first entry, row 1, column 1. So I'm using row 1's inner product with column 1, minus 1 minus 1, minus 2. Row 1, column 2. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. Row 1, column 3, inner product. 2 plus 1 is 3. All right, I'm done with row 1. Now we're looking at row 2. Inner product with column 1, naught minus 4 is minus 4. Row 2, column 2. Naught plus 12 is 12. Row 2, column 3, inner product, 0 plus 4 is 4. And that's the product of two matrices. Now, in the last video, we're going to be doing a lot more examples on the product of two matrices.